movie fans, three guesses what we're reviewing today. Yeah. Well, I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan, so I'm going to be leaving this on for the duration of the review. But the main question that I know you all want answered, how is it? Is it better than the last one? Because that one stunk, and I agree with you. It was awful. Is it good? Is it worth watching? Well, that's a complicated answer that we're going to dive right into. First of all, it is better than the predecessor, the 2014, I believe it's 2014, Ninja Turtles. I was not a fan of by any stretch of the imagination. Like, they got certain elements right, that being the Turtles. But the rest of the movie, I wasn't too fond of. One of the main aspects of that was the Ninja Turtles weren't the main characters of this last movie. That was definitely corrected for this. I was glad to see that all four Turtles are, without a doubt, the main character, and they're more defined. Uh, Leonardo's definitely the leader, Raphael's more the hothead. All the characteristics that you know and love of the Turtles are back in this, and they're the focal point of the movie. Like a Ninja Turtles movie should be. Shocker! And unlike the last one that tried to balance the seriousness of the comics with the lighthearted tone of the animated series, and tried to mesh it all into one that didn't really work, this one takes more of the lighthearted approach, which might turn some people off and seem a bit childish. To me, that seemed more like the classic Ninja Turtles that I know, and it seemed more fun. The movie seemed more aware of what it was trying to be, as opposed to trying to be something that it wasn't. In that case, it makes it more enjoyable for me, because the movie seems to be self-aware. And that the movie's not great, but at least it knows what it is and tries to stay in this little sphere. The, now, there's also some great new additions. There was some cast recastings, kind of like the Shredder was recast from the original. It's not some bald guy in the shadows. It's an actual actor now, and he doesn't really get his time to shine, which is unfortunate. But it was nice to see a Shredder that bared more resemblance to the Shredder that we know, and not just some giant mech suit. And Rocksteady and Beep Bop, they're finally here on the big screen, and yeah, they were Rocksteady and Beep Bop. I don't know the other guy's name, and Seamus, which is just entertaining to watch the end credits and just see Seamus. Both of those guys really delivered as Rocksteady and Beep Bop. Like, you can tell they have this genuine chemistry, and they're just goofy and nutty, and they fit into this universe really, really well. Another thing that they changed from the original, but for the better in my mind, was Splinter. I really was not a fan of how they portrayed Splinter in the last movie, as he was really cruel and hard on the turtles, and not very affectionate in any way, not like a good father figure. Whereas this one, all the scenes that he has with the turtles, it's, I'm a father figure, I'm trying to help and guide you to adulthood, and he really does that. You can tell in this one that he genuinely cares for the turtles in which I question that a lot in the other one of do you even care about them but in this one you're like okay yeah you're definitely the father figure of the group and I, I can definitely get behind you and he looks a lot less creepy. The movie does adapt and evolve a lot from the original one. They learn from their mistakes however they do fall into the same pitfalls of some of the originals. Any of the mistakes that you had with the original one probably will come back and surface in this new one. There's a lot of plot holes and just, really? I, I don't think that's how that goes. And some of the caricatures of people don't really line up, particularly Casey Jones. Now, I love Stephen Amell, and I was really excited when I heard that he was going to be playing Casey Jones, but he's not Casey Jones by any stretch of the imagination. How he gets involved with the Turtles and fits into the plot is paper thin. Like... Really? That's your reasoning? Thankfully, the humans are kept in a much smaller role this time around than the first time, in which case they were the main characters and the turtles were secondary characters. But again, when the humans are involved, you're just kind of, eh, can we get back to the turtles? Like, it wasn't a particularly enjoyable time being with the humans, and Casey Jones especially. Like, he was too Stephen Amell-ish. And you can say, well, they're trying to go something different. But, again, if you're not trying to be Casey Jones, then why name him Casey Jones? And he just was kind of there. Like, yeah, he seemed like he had charisma, but nothing about him made me invested in him as a character. So, either make him Casey Jones, or make him a dynamic character. And neither of those really worked. Thankfully, Megan Fox's April O'Neil was kept in a minor role. She still has some scenes where you're just rolling your eyes, but... And it's not too bad. There's some other characters looking at you, Baxter Stockman, played by Tyler Perry, because that just fits. 
that I'm like, uh, can we move on to the next scene? It just really did not work. This movie relies a lot on telling and not showing. There's a lot of scenes that are just there to explain something, and that's kind of just for people that aren't Ninja Turtles fans, which is, I guess, a gripe that I have about this movie is, I'm a diehard Ninja Turtles fan, so I enjoyed a lot of aspects of it, but as a film fan, I'm left frustrated because if I don't know the Turtles, this is really, really confusing as they're throwing in this guy and this guy and this subplot and this story and this and this. I'm like, I can track with it, but I'll be totally lost if I didn't have years of turtle knowledge going into this. It's for Turtles fans, which is good, but as a movie fan, I'm just like, the story is really disjointed and all over the place. And the epic fight scene at the end, no spoilers or anything, but it's literally the exact same ending from the previous Ninja Turtles. Like, beat for beat, just control C, control V, and that's how you did it. So as a whole, this movie, it is definitely a step up from the previous Ninja Turtles movie. That being said, it's not the best movie. It's a fun Ninja Turtles movie, but it's not a great movie movie. So it's like somewhere in the middle of all the Ninja Turtles movies. It's not the best, not the worst. So if you call yourself a Ninja Turtles fan, I'd at least recommend checking it out. If you don't have a really strong attachment to the characters, I'd say just skip it. But what did you guys think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows as my mask is falling down? What would you guys think of it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen and want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Or find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at 17 Movie Reviews. Stay sharp, movie guys and gals.